Brother Imhotep, with the, the first reading, he is our youth leader. So for the benefit of others to know who, what is he is doing here in church, he is our youth leader. And uh, Pastor Sabu is also leading in the Pathfinder department. So I'm going to do the announcements, but I would also like us to pray for those who are joining us and uh, our visitors, and also for the announcements which I'm going to make to you. Why I need to pray? We have a tendency of forgetting. I want the Lord to seal all what we are doing in our minds. Let us pray. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you on a day like this, the day you have chosen that your children will gather together and share your word. We thank you for the names which have been read before us, who are joining us permanently here in Preston, as they will be doing your work. I pray for protection. I pray for good health. Not for just them, but their families and all of us. I pray for our visitors. I pray that, Lord, as I will be sharing the announcements with your church, they will remain in their minds, and you seal it, and remind them when the date comes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, the first announcement is there will be a steward day, stewardship day on the 11th of May. Say, take note of that, stewardship day on the 11th of May. The second announcement is BMC, we all know BMC, the department which is responsible for our buildings. They are now start working on the rams, the ram which will take those on the wheelchair into the church and there will be another ramp connecting here in the church. There will be some work which will be done here and outside. So, we just wanted to make you aware as a church that you continue to pray for that work. We have been waiting for it, and we continue to pray that that work starts. When it starts, you will be asked, it's either in the car park or here in church, some movements, we pray that you will work with BMC and those who will be undertaking the work. There will be a business meeting to discuss further about this. So the dates will be shared with you. Next week, there is going to be a community market which is going to take place on the 18th of April, half past 11 here. And if you plan to attend, to come to that, I am advised that you come early as possible, half past 11, because items go quickly like this. So if you plan to come, please be on time. <coughs> then these two last ones, I want you to take them seriously as well. <coughs> Next Sabbath, it's going to be a busy Sabbath for us here in Preston. We are going to have Market Square at 3 o'clock. It finishes at 4 o'clock. Market Square, it gives us the opportunity to evangelize to others who are not here with us down there 
in the market, at the market. So come and participate. After that, we'll go home. Then we prepare ourselves to come back to church at 10 o'clock night and spend the night with the Lord in prayer here in church. This is our first for a long time. You are encouraged. Maybe you've done it before. Maybe you've not done it before. This is your opportunity. But that is not to say you don't pray. You have been praying. But let us come and spend the night with the Lord in prayer. So as we continue with the Sabbath, I pray that you continue to pray for these announcements. They stick in your heads. And we remember when it comes. May the Lord bless you as we continue the service. And may I also ask those on the platform party to join me in the vestry. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. A pleasant Sabbath to you all. Good. I've been asked to do the song service this morning, and because I've just been asked, I'm not prepared. I would rather have, like, to have prepared in advance. So what I'm going to do this morning, I'm just going to ask at random if you have a favorite that you would like to sing, then we do that. But where are the children and the young people? Where are the children? They're on holiday? <laughs> Are we having any children here? I saw plenty coming in. Why, why are they not in here? Right, but I saw quite a lot coming in through the front door. Where are those young people who came in from Sabbath school? Where are they? That's one, no, there was about, that's two. Where are the rest? Okay, well, I'm going to sing a song. I would like you to join in singing this song. And it's Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, For The Bible Tells Me So. Just a moment, Raj, I want to find the number of that. 190? Right. This is for the children. Then the young people, I want you to have one ready. 
after the congregation have sang theirs. Among the congregation and the seniors, can I have one from you after we have this one for the children? Please. 190. Give me a moment, Raj. Give me a moment, please. I want to get to the source. Yes, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are meek, but he is strong. I once was a child, you know, and I remember back in those years long ago that we used to sing this at song service time or AYS time or whatever. And I want to us to sing this with the children. And I'm going to ask the children to sing a verse on their own. Maybe this second verse. I'm going to ask you to sing that on your own. And we will join you in the chorus. But together we are going to sing uh, the first verse and the chorus. Everybody together. Thank you, Raj. Yes, we need to stand up for Jesus. Huh? Victory unto victory. 
bow our heads for prayer. Loving Father, I just want to thank you so much for everything that you and the beloved Son have done for each and every one of us. And when I think of the love that you've shown us, it is beyond words to express. I experience it every morning. And Lord, help us to appreciate these things, to appreciate thee, to appreciate the beloved Son, to appreciate each other. Lord, may this Sabbath be a special blessing for each and every one of us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shall we sit down, please? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endure it forever. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered out of the lands from east and from the west, 
from the north and from the south. And what do you say to that? Upon this reading, I want to welcome each and everyone to today's divine service. And what do you say to that? Do we have any first time visitor here today? If this is your first time visiting us, could you please raise your hand up? It seems we do not have any visitor, any first time visitor. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every individual here to Preston SDA Church. Today is Sabbath. And the Lord has promised to bless us when we worship him in truth. When we worship him in faith. So beloved, let us trust the Lord to bless us today. Those with me on the platform, we have our dear sister Freya who will be doing the offering. We have Andrea who will be doing the scripture reading. And uh, our dear pastor, Pastor Sabu, who do the church at prayer. My name is Alex, and I'm doing the welcome. Our opening song is taken from 5 to 8, a shelter in the time of storm. Shall we all rise and sing beautifully to the glory of God? Yeah. 
it's time for us to worship God with our, with our offerings. Let's all close our eyes for the prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you with our giving. We give ourselves to you. We return the th tithes and place the offerings with gra graceful hearts. Bless the offerings, Lord, that it might be used for your honor and glory. Bless us and keep us faithful till you come back again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. downstairs, upstairs, be careful of the steps. Anyone coming downstairs, be careful of the steps. Thank you. I love the pit, pit, dropping off the raindrops. I love the buzz, buzz, buzzing off the I love the best, and yes, the very, very best. It's the no, it's the no, it's the no that God loves. I love the big, big jumping of the raindrops. I love the buzz, buzz, buzzing of the bees. But the things I love the best, and yes, the very, very best. Auntie Jenny, we've missed her for a week or two. Thank you. <laughs> morning, boys and girls. Morning. Gosh, we've got quite a few this morning, haven't we? I don't know half of your names. What's your name? Edwina. Billy. Gossip. And who are you? 
Isaiah. Katia. Tammy. Caleb. And Adam Chanel. Chanel. Melissa. Melissa. Tyree. Wow. Melissa. Tyrese, you've got a big voice. Thank you, Tyrese. Right. Does anybody know what chores are? Hand, hands up. What's chores? Do you know what chores are? Uh, chores or things or like the activities or like, like, what you, like what you do, like wash the dishes. Yes. Amen. Go, go, for the, go for the dog on a walk. Okay, well done. And, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, and iron uh, and iron all the and iron well all the shirts and thank you he definitely knows what chores are okay we're going to talk about a, a young boy called james and james didn't like doing chores at all and his mom and his dad they asked him and they asked him to do certain chores but do you know what james did he kind of he always sneaked off and he got out of doing the chores but this wasn't very good. And mom and dad were at their wits end. They didn't know what to do with him. Now, one day, James went to school. And his friend said, James, can we come to your house to play? Do you like to have your friends around to play? Do you not like having friends around to play at your house? No? Nobody? Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. So his friend said, we'd like to come and play at your house. So he rang his mommy and he said, Mom, can my friends come to play? And she said, well, that's fine with me as long as it's fine with their mom and dad as well. It's okay, leave her, leave her, it's okay. So they were all excited and they ran to James's house. Right, let's go and play upstairs in my bedroom, James said. So he ran upstairs, he opened the door and he went, oh no. It looked like there'd been an explosion of laundry in his room. There were clothes all over the bed. There were clothes on the floor. There were smelly socks and smelly shoes hanging around. And he went, well, that's strange. When I'm back from school, my room is normally tidy. So he quickly shut the door. He said, no, 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 we can't play inside my bedroom today. I tell you what. We'll go outside into the garden instead. Now, he has a little dog that was running around in his garden. So they went into the garden, and then he said, Oh, no, what's that on the grass? The doggy had done something on the grass. You know what I mean, and it wasn't very nice. So he said, Oh, well, I don't think we can play in the garden today. That's very strange. Usually when I'm home from school, everything's clean, but not today. So I tell you what, let's go inside and we can play on my PlayStation instead. So James plugged in his PlayStation and he put his games into the PlayStation. But guess what? When he put the controllers in, they weren't working. Why do you think they weren't working? No charge. They hadn't been charged all day, so they weren't working. So James is like, oh, no. That doesn't normally happen. When I come home from school, my PlayStation is usually charged up. I tell you what, we'll just have to wait until dinner time. So they went downstairs, and there were some lovely smells coming from the kitchen. So the boys sat around the table, and mum came in, and she put on a really nice spread. You know, when you have visitors, and you get your best plates out, she put the best plates out, the knives and the forks, the serviettes. Then she came in, and she says, now, for the first course, we're going to have soup. And everybody went, yay, because everybody loves a bit of soup, especially when your daddy makes it. Especially when your daddy makes it, he makes nice soup. So, mommy started to pour out the soup. So she poured out some soup for his friends, and then when she came to James's bowl, James looked at his bowl, and he saw bits of this morning's breakfast in his bowl. 
bits of porridge oats that he'd had that morning. So mom said, and I'm going to give you a double portion because I know how much you like this soup. And James is like, oh. All his friends were, were like, wow, your mom's soup is absolutely delicious. And as he was eating his soup, all he could think of was all these floating bits of oats that were coming to the surface in his soup. So he wasn't enjoying it at all. So everybody's saying, wow, your mom is such a good cook. It was time for the main dish now. And what were they having? They were having lasagna. And that was one of James's favorite meals. So mommy put a portion for everybody. And then when she got to James's plate, his plate had some leftover food from, well, leftover lasagna from last night. There was a little bit of cheese stuck on it and some dried tomatoes stuck on the edge of his plate. So he wasn't very happy. So mum said, here's an extra big serving just for you, James, because I know how much you like lasagna, so I cooked it again for you tonight especially for you and your friends. So James' friends were saying, oh, this lasagna is the best lasagna I've ever tasted. But James was kind of putting his fork in and squirming and he wasn't enjoying it at all. So he just ate the top of the lasagna and he didn't go anywhere near the bottom of the plate. But he had to eat it up because his mommy told him you've got to eat all of it. So now it was time for dessert. And it was sticky toffee pudding. Yum, yum. That was another one of James's favorites. But he said, Mommy, it's all right. I don't want any sticky toffee pudding. I'll just have fruit. And Mommy said, No, 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 no. I made it specially for you and your friends because I know how much you love it. So Mom gave a portion to all the boys and then came to his plate. And what did he have in his, on his plate? A bit of sticky toffee and a bit of leftover custard that was all stuck around the edge. And mommy still put the sticky toffee pudding in and she gave him a double portion. But he really tried his hardest to eat it. Now it was time for the friends to go home and they had had such a nice time, such a nice meal. And they said, wow, we're gonna come again. Your mom is such a good cook. And then they left to go home. Now James said, mom, why did you do that? You knew my friends were coming and this was a really important day for me. I wanted to show them my nice house, my nice mom and dad, my nice food and my nice garden, and look what happened. My room looked like a bombshell, and the dog made a mess in the garden, and nobody charged my PlayStation. And, Mom, worst of all, you didn't wash the plates. So, Mom, she just sat there quietly listening to what he said, and then she said, James, aren't those your chores? You need to do what's right all the time, not just when people are watching you or because you want to impress people. You need to be good all the time. So James learned a very important lesson that day. Now, as Christians, we need to be Christians all the time, not just when people are watching us, okay? And we have to do what's right. We have to be obedient to mom and dad as well, okay? And God will pour out blessings on us, all right? And that's your story for today. Would anybody like to pray? Come on then, Tyrese. You've got a big voice. Come on then. Come. You can say a prayer for me today, can't you? Good boy. Okay. Let's close our eyes, everybody. Dear Jesus, thank you for the story. Please help us to be good boys and girls and obedient to mommy and daddy. 
Please bless the soul. Give the may pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, you can go back to your seats, boys. And very, very is the Lord. Is the Lord. Merciful and loving Father in heaven, Lord, we want to thank Thee for giving us this great opportunity to come together in Your feet, O oh Lord. Lord, we realize that we are not worthy to be here, but we are thankful to You too, through Jesus. You gave us the courage to come in front of you. And we want to thank thee for the great hope you have given unto each and every one of us. Lord, please listen us. Please accept our prayers. Thank you for the church. Thank you for each and every one of us, those who granted the opportunity to come to the road here. Lord, we especially pray for each and everyone, those who are not with us today. Lord, we want to thank thee for bringing them next week so that we can praise you and worship you together. We again pray for the sick and suffering. Either they are in hospital or at home. Visit them, O oh Lord. Stretch your mighty hand upon them. Give them a miraculous healing, O oh Lord, so that they themselves and their whole family praise you and thank you. Lord, we want to pray for the children, those who are representing the church in PB, there in the Netherlands. Lord, bless, him, bless them in such a way so that they can they can praise you in their victory over there. Give thy Holy Spirit upon them so that they can answer and they can perform well so that your name be glorified. Lord, bless each and every home. Bless each and every soul. Bless each and every children over, uh, in, in thy house, O oh Lord. Especially we pray for the speaker of the hour. Lord, what we are going to hear, what we are going, going to receive from him, let it be a blessing for each and every one of us. Lord, strengthen us in such a way so that we can repent. We can, we can repent the, the way 
our lord wants us to be lord send them send each and every one of us in a in a full heart be a gratitude with you oh lord lord uh we want to thank thee for hearing our prayer answering our prayer mm. in jesus special name we pray amen amen Amen. Yeah, we thank the Lord for how far he has led us into today's worship. Please permit me to bring you greetings from our dear pastor Roman and the PBE team who are currently in Amsterdam. Later on uh, this afternoon, there will be Pathfinder Bible Experience. And one team from uh, Preston are representing. So please let us remember them in our prayers so that they will once again bring victory. What do you say to that? Andrea will give us the scripture reading, after which our dear sister Abigail will give us the special item. But today, the one whom the Lord has selected to break the bread of life to us is nobody than our dear brother, Andrew Ologiola. What do you say to that? I've come to know brother Andrew very, very well. He's someone who loves God. He's very dedicated. But Andrew is always reading the Bible because that is where his source of power comes from. He's my prayer partner whom we always pray, especially on Sabbath. I asked him, what is the meaning of your name, Ologiola. What he said was, it's a face of wealth and richness. So today, I know the Lord is going to use him to speak to us and to speak to him as well. So please, let us continue to pray for our dear brother as he mounts the pulpit to deliver the word of God. But before then, Andrea will give us the key test. Our brother will be preaching the sermon on, after which our dear sister Abigail will give us rendition for the special item. After that, the voice that you hear is our dear brother, brother Andrew Olojola. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 12, verse 22 to 31. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn and God feeds them. 
of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? If you are then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor, nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. If God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after. But, and you and your father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Amen. Sister Abigail. Jesus says, here I stand, won't you please let me in? And you say, I will, but tomorrow. Jesus says, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you say, I know. But tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll give my life tomorrow. Don't let this moment slip away. Oh, cause tomorrow might be too late. Tomorrow. Brothers and sisters, um, just before I begin, I just want to ask maybe someone if you could kindly record this sermon for me, maybe send it to me, whoever knows my phone number, because a friend of mine was asking for the sermon outside of church, so they wanted to hear the sermon. If you could. Thank you very much. All right. So anyway, brothers... I have nothing but positive things to give to you today. The brother was interpreting my name. The name means, I pronounce it in the Nigerian, Olojuola. That's how I was known. But it's not face of wealth. I'd rather not regard it as face of wealth. I'd rather regard it as eyes that behold wealth in order to impart to others. Amen. Not to withhold from myself, to impart to others. So that's what I've come here to do today. The title of my sermon today is, Why Worry Now? Have Faith in God. Let us, before we begin, let me just bow and say a word of prayer. Loving Father, I came home from work very tired, and I just thought, Lord, am I going to get up, you know, to, 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 to get ready, get everything ready? But somehow I found myself waking up at five minutes to one in the morning. And it's amazing how the Holy Spirit just gently moves upon you to put things together. By the time quarter to three came along, everything was done. But even I was astonished. 
That is the measure of your love. Lord, I'm praying that the people here, just as you have blessed me, will, bless, will be blessed today. I'm not worthy, Lord, to stand here. Lord, you know me better than I know myself. But Lord, I just pray that, Lord, you'd simply use me, Lord, to, to give to thy people the message for this time. Lord, may all leave here with something to take with them. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Why worry? Now, have faith in God. In Nigeria, we used to say, uh-uh. Those are the ones. I've been here for a long time, but you can't take the Nigerian out of me. So, uh-uh. You know, so that's how, but God would also say the same thing. Uh-uh. Why worry now? Have faith in God. Why should we worry, brothers? We're part of a winning team, aren't we? Doesn't the book of uh, the church of, of Revelation make that clear? We often talk about the church militant, soldiers in the army. We are soldiers in the army. I don't know if you can sing that, but I don't know the words. But we often sing those words. We've got to hold up the bloodstained banner. We've got to hold it up until we die. Are we like people who are holding up the bloodstained banner? Um, and the church triumphant. We talk about the church triumphant. What does it mean to be triumphant? It means to be completely victorious. Completely, you know, uh, you think about gloriously victorious. Um, not just victorious, but victorious in the deeper sense of the word. But what do we mean? When we say that, let's look closely at why we should not worry. The beloved prophet for our time, Ellen G. White, vividly details this corroding care and what it's doing to us and to God and Christ we love, who loves us so much. And this comes from Testimonies, Volume 1. And she wrote the following. She wrote this as, um, in a passage called Have Faith in God in Testimonies, Volume 1. She says, I saw that there was a great lack of faith with the servants of God as well as with the church. They were, they were too easily discouraged, too ready to doubt God, too willing to believe that they had a hard lot and that God had forsaken them. I saw that this was cruel. God loved them as to give his dearly beloved son to die for them. And all heaven was interested in their salvation. Yet after all that had been done for them, it was hard to believe and trust so kind and good a father. He has said that he is more willing to give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. See, we prayed and fasted last week. So this is God's response to you now. That earthly parents are to, give, are to give good gifts to their children. I saw that the servants of God and the church were too easily discouraged. When they asked their Father in heaven for things which they thought they needed, and these did not immediately come, their faith wavered, their courage fled, and a murmuring feeling took possession of them. This I saw displeased God. So all I can say, brothers, let's not displease him. He's done so much for us, done so very much. I can say that for myself. When I look back at my childhood and realize the blessings I had, I wish I could get back those years again. But still, he continues to bless in spite of ourselves. Are we like this? I have been like this. I can relate to the experience at work, maybe yesterday. At the moment, I'm going through a situation where my team leader is just continually giving me mentors, 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 mentors to just oversee my work. And I'm thinking, oh, is she being too hard on me? But then, yesterday, she came to me and said, 
as she began to review my work and do my spot checks, she said, what I saw was just so amazing, because they're listening to our calls. What I heard was just so amazing. But that was because of a refining of me. And I could feel the Spirit say to me, keep your mouth shut, because I'm too ready to open my mouth. Keep your mouth shut, no matter what. And she came and said to me, what I saw was so amazing. But of course, I knew where, that, where I got that from. I knew where the success came from. And it came from the mornings that I spent with God. I realized, and more so now, when I was a, a little child, and Sister White did make it clear that the one thing that would keep us out of the kingdom is indolence, laziness. Yeah, indolence is laziness, a deepest form of laziness. So she said, the one thing that will keep us out of the kingdom is laziness. I remember I had a grandmother, and I can relate, many of you are grandmothers here, so I can relate to them. When I look at uh, my dear sister Nelson here, she's got, she had the stature of sister Nelson, and she would always wake up very early in the morning to pray. And she'd get me up very early in the morning as well. You know what our grandmothers were like in those days. Whether you come from Jamaica or Nigeria, in those days, everything was natural. People were very strict, but of course, it didn't matter. So my grandmother would wake us up, but I also had a grandfather. And he was of the stature of my dear brother, uh, Sil here, but always mustachioed. So I was a mustachioed man that tend to be the more butcher. And then he would take the bell, and he would go... You know, but he had a much, much more thicker bell. And if you didn't get up in the morning, you know, your ears started to ring. You know, and um, although I hated it, I hated them getting me up so early in the morning, yet that upbringing has stayed with me. So now I start to get up early in the morning. Before I go to work, I wake up at 4.30 in the morning. I'm very groggy, in my mind is not completely, but I still wake up. All because of that upbringing that I had, it just stayed with me. So I tend to, I'm at the table by five, and by 20 minutes to seven, I'm starting to get ready. But I always wake up now because I'm conscious of the challenges I have to face. I'm conscious of the challenges I have to face, but I'm also conscious of a God and the Lord who has seen things coming before they happen. That's why the song says, um, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Do you believe it, brothers? And life is worth the living just because he lives. So, the way that my logic is this, some of us are afraid to trust in God. But my logic is this, if God sees the future, if God knows what's going to happen before it's happened, if God knows how your life is going to pan out, you don't even know, then isn't it better to trust in him? It's better to commit all to him. Because here, this world is a very dark world. You don't know what's coming around the corner, right? Some people go out there and their lives are cut short, maybe it's by some madman, maybe because they've not maybe chosen to spend that time with God. I, I don't know. But all I, all I can see is that maybe if they, perhaps if they maybe spent maybe that minute or half an hour just sitting down, maybe the Lord might have diverted them somewhere else. This is the kind of God I'm dealing with. So, therefore, um, I kind of, from that experience at work, it really, the Lord really taught me that you should continue to trust in me more. Trust in me more, because that's the only way. That is the secret to success. He is the source of success. We are human. We all tend to worry. A lot of you here are parents. You all worry for your children's future. 
But is it a healthy thing? Is it a healthy thing to do so? If it is corroding, the beloved prophet mentions corroding care. If it is corroding, it is most certainly not a healthy thing at all. The adorable Jesus says, if ye then be not able to do the thing which is least, this is in Luke chapter 12, verse 26, if ye then be not able to do the thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? What is the thing which is least? It is faith in God, trust in God. My father used to work as a motor mechanic when we arrived in Nigeria. And he would gather his friends and all the apprentices when they were repairing a car. And he'd put me close by the side to watch the car, to look at what he was doing, so that I could learn from it. And one thing I noticed was the spark plug. Once you put the spark plug in, it ignited, came to life. You take it out, you're not going anywhere. And faith is like that. It's like a spark plug in a car or a motorcycle. It may seem small and insignificant, yet, yet, if you take it out of the car or motorcycle, it ain't going anywhere. We all sing, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon those all around can warm them up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you know, we, all, we always sing that. But that same spark of faith must be in us, first of all. If it ain't, we're going nowhere. Yeah? Um, it is the same with us. Without faith in Christ, we're going nowhere. What is this faith, you ask me? The beloved prophet, for our time, came straight to the point, And she wrote the following. This is in um, Testimonies, Volume 1, page 620. She says the following. She's talking about her husband who was discouraged. I saw that my husband would be inclined to shrink from making efforts in accordance with his faith. Fear and anxiety in regard to his own case made him timid. He looks at appearances at disagree disagreeable feelings of the body. Now, our pioneers were not perfect. They were human like us. Said the angel, faith is feeling is not faith. Said the angel, feeling is not faith. Faith is simply to take God at his word. I saw that in, this na in the name and strength of God, my husband must resist disease and by the power of his will rise above his poor feelings. He must assert his liberty in the name and strength of Israel's God. He must cease thinking about himself as much as possible. He should be cheerful and happy. And it is likewise with us. We should assert our liberty in Christ. Believe that no matter what, even in this time of crisis, we can overcome we can surmount obstacles. We can be cheerful and happy. Amen. So faith is not feeling. Faith is to take God at his word. Brethren, I hope this is the word. Sister White had a bigger Bible. Do you know that little lady? She held that up with her hand. Yeah? So I'm holding it aloft before you. This is the thing. This is the business. Yeah? It's packed with victory from beginning to end. If you don't believe it, well, you're missing something. Yeah? Um, I hold up this word of Christ before you. And so, um, let me read to you something. The world seems to know better than we do at times. Strange enough how God, bear with me one second, bear with, 
نبودی Sorry, just from yesterday. Um, strange enough, um, the world seemed to do much better than we do. I read something. It's funny how God puts something in your hands. Put something in your hands just for the moment. This is about football or the sporting world. Many of you like football. Many of you like sports. But I noticed one of the things as I was going to work from the Metro, it talked about the secrets of the great team of success. I used to be a football mad fanatic. One of the things that used to fascinate me were the managers, not necessarily the players, but the managers, the tactics, the Reiners Mikels with total football, the, the, the Dutch team that he invented what is called total football. They were winning team. The Germans, with their very slow and very steady movements, but they would catch you on the break. I used to watch that all as a kid. The Brazilian teams, with their flair, and the way they would pass the ball around, and, you know, and, you know, and I tell you, the Socrates, the Edders, and all these players. So I used to watch all these games. But I used to be fascinated, not necessarily with the players, but the managers, the Alex Fergusons, and the, the Mourinho's. But one thing he said about the secrets of a great team, he said, this, and this is faith in action, it says, um, but trust in work and life makes the world work. Trustworthiness is demonstrated in two keys thorough competence, and by having integrity. Let me see, yeah, let me see. He goes on and says, um, in a company or a sports team, trust is vital. Half of all the people who want to change their jobs don't trust their employers. And what about outside of work? In 2021, poll 18% of Americans said they had only one person on nobody they could trust for personal help. That's 46 million people lacking trust in their lives. That's why trusting teams prosper. Or you could say teams of faith who have faith in their manager. Many top coaches like Pep Guardiola arrive with competence-based trust secure. Manchester City believed he could make them win. And so it proved, making him a man of his word. Remember I said, faith is taking God, or let's say Christ, our leader, at his word. Making him a man of his word, integrity and trust. And, and it, says, it says the following, and a combination of both trust factors is strongest. The way Jurgen Klopp announced his departure from Liverpool was a case in point. Not for club, and not for club, rushed exit. Links with other Premier League clubs and a rift with the fans. No, he stated his boundaries. He expressed his love for the club, ex explained why I'm running out of energy, and laid what would happen, happen next. During his period in management, barring the Europa League, Liverpool have won everything. But what about us? Huh? What about us? We're supposed to be the best team in the whole wide world. Seventh day Adventists. And he goes, the sports world knows about faith and trust. Aren't we better than they are? Let me quote all of the greatest managers or football teams who have led their teams to greatest victories. Isn't Jesus Christ the one and only Messiah greater than them all? Let me read to you a scene from the cross. I always want to bring to cro the cross before you. Uh, one of the things that always fascinates me, and I won't be long, this is the part where he was ending his life. After this, 
Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, so he'd, won, he'd beaten Satan from beginning to end. He'd accomplished what he set out to do. The scripture might be fulfilled, saith I first. Now there was a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar, and put it upon his sup, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. Or in the Hebrew, Teletestai. Yeah? Teletestai. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. But you, I always tend to read with my glasses, with my new set of specs. Things come vividly. But you can imagine at that last moment because it was such a battle, it was such a terrifying battle with Satan. And at the last, knowing that victory was in sight, you think of the cry that just came from him. Yeah? Like the awesome, look on the football teams whenever they win trophies. When the captain lifts up the trophy, you, yeah, like that, you know. Yeah? But what about Christ? And Sister White said that all heaven there was such a, a whoop of joy in all heaven because of what he had achieved. And this is the kind of captain that you and I, everyone has a particular captain. And I've noticed football teams, and maybe Seth, prove me wrong, I've noticed whenever there's a victory, it's always a captain that gives the roar, the loudest roar. And this captain for us, gave the loud, so much so that the Roman soldier who looked in it, because the Roman soldier had fought many battles, so he knew what was a victory cry from just an anguished cry. He knew, he, could, he knew the difference. So this is the same thing, brothers. The beloved Savior says in verse 31, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. In Matthew 6, verse 33, he says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is this kingdom of God and his righteousness? Our service to God has often been referred to here. But do you know, brothers and sisters, it also refers to our victorious standard. That standard is written in our name. That winning standard is written in the name Seventh the Adventist. That will stand the test of time and eternity. Someone read for me Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Someone get your Bible and read for me Revelation 12, 17. Before I close. Okay, why do you think the dragon's wrath? Why do you think he's angry? Because of that standard, the, te the commandments of God, the testimony of Jesus. He doesn't like that standard. So if he doesn't like it, well, I'm happy. Huh? He's ruined my life long enough. So why don't I use that standard to hammer him and hammer him to pieces? Huh? Through the grace of Christ Jesus, of course through the victorious Jesus. Someone read for me Revelation 14, verse 12. Okay. The patience of the saints. The patient endurance of the saints in the same standard. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. What does that mean? Well, I'll show you something. I, I was reluctant to let, let, let this go. It's always on my wall. Kirvin painted me a picture. I've kept that. I'm not, I'm not 
uh, taken that. But he painted a very beautiful picture of this. This is hanging on the walls of our headquarters. And let me show you a first picture. This was what James White, and he gave an illustration. At first, you see the picture of the Old Testament era, and then you see the law. Then you see the crucifixion. Then you see the New Testament era. And this is hanging on the walls of a... It's an, there's an engraved... Um, uh, picture on our, the walls of our headquarters in Washington. And uh, James White depicted our faith through this. And one of the things James White said is that the law, that is the Old Testament era, and the gospel must run parallel with each other. They cannot be separated. The world wants to separate God's law from the gospel but they must run parallel with each other. And he defined this Old Testament dispensation and the New Testament dispensation as the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And he said, by our, we used to be called the people of the book, and he said, by our commitment to practicing the principles of the Old and New Testament, he said, we show that we keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus after James White's death in 1881, Sister White drew a different picture. But this time, because people were too, focusing too much on the law, far too much on the law, so she drew a different picture with just, just the cross. As you see, the cross takes center stage. You see, it takes center stage so that people do not focus too much on the law. They've got a balance. As an elder said to me, Get the balance right. Get the balance right. So, this is our faith. And um, towards the end, since, uh, there was a book called, um, in Testimonies, Volume 8, there's a, a chapter called View of the Conflict, and I'm going to read it to you. In vision, I saw two armies in terrible conflict, one army was led by banners bearing the world's insignia. The other was led by the bloodstained banner of Prince Emmanuel. Standard after standard was left to trail in the dust as company after company from the Lord's army joined the foe. And tribe after tribe from the ranks of the enemy united with the commandment-keeping people of God. An angel flying in the midst of heaven put the standard of Emmanuel into many hands. Come into line, those who are loyal to the commandments of God and the testimony of Christ now take their position. Come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and I will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters. Let all who come up to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty, the battle raged. Victory alternated from side to side. Now the soldiers of the cross gave way. But as a standard bearer fainted, Isaiah 10, 18. But their apparent retreat was but to gain a more advantageous position. Shouts of joy were heard. Songs of praise to God went up. And angel voices united in song as Christ's soldiers planted his banner on the walls of fortresses till then held by the enemy. The captain of our salvation was ordering the battle and sending support to his soldiers. His power was mightily displayed, encouraging them to press the battle to the gates. He taught them terrible things in righteousness as he led them on step by step, conquering and to conquer. At last, victory was gained. The army, following the banner with the inscription, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, was gloriously triumphant. That is us, brothers and sisters. The soldiers of Christ were close beside the gates of the city and with joy received their king. 
the kingdom of peace and joy and everlasting righteousness was established. So brothers, we're not losers. We're all here to be winners. Every one of us. So brothers, brothers and sisters, let us rise up and assert our liberty in God. We are part of a winning team. We should be fighting against each other. A part of a winning team. The church militant and the church gloriously triumphant. Worry is blind and cannot discern the future. Um, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And let me just end with this. In reading um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Uh, 58, and it says, if you read it carefully. Let me, let me begin from verse 55, because many of you love this. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who gives us the victory? Jesus. Jesus. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May the Lord's blessing rest upon this reading today. Amen. We thank God for using our dear brother to speak to us this afternoon. Please, shall we observe this announcement? All church members, please remain seated after the benediction. So we entreat all the visitors, please, please, if you wouldn't mind, you may leave us. But lunch is provided in that building, so please, all the visitors may leave for lunch after the benediction, but please, church members, remain seated for just five minutes, no more than that. This afternoon, we have AYS program at three o'clock. Uh, it's a presentation on knife crime, gangs, and online safety by Kirian and Veronica. Please let us all be present to support this program. Shall we all stand as we end this service by singing hymn number 524. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to trust this cleansing blood, I'm the
heads. As the song said, Jesus is a winner man, and a winner man for all time. But a winner man who makes each and every one of us winners, not losers. Help us to look to our leader, to trust in him. Help each and every one of us to gain the strength each morning to sit at the table with him so that there may be victories in our lives. We may see each other in thy kingdom. Give us a glorious Sabbath day. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we be seated? Please, as the visitors are leaving for lunch, I will call Sister Impo to come forward. Just five minutes. Offline, we should be offline. Are we offline? Can we get offline, please? 